Uh, before 10, we're also catching up with the Holton Price and Howden MP, David Davis. Now, I know you've been talking about this on breakfast this morning. He's taking the Environment Agency to task over the handling of the situation at the Gilbertite landfill site in East Yorkshire. So we'll be chatting to him later. And after 10 o'clock, we've got... And all this weekend for Burnsy. And more on that stink now. People living in Newport and Gilbertite, uh, east of Goul, are calling on East Riding Council and the Environment Agency to take more enforcement action against the owners of a landfill tip. They say City Plan was supposed to have landscaped the Gilbertite tip by last month, but claim the company hasn't even started the work yet. Well, in a minute, we'll be live in Newport, but first, this report from Kate Sweeting. It's a problem that should have gone away. This former tip in Gilbertite was meant to be grassed over by last month, but the owners have missed that deadline, and the people living near it say it still stinks. Especially on a night, we can sit in our lounge some nights and you can smell it in the lounge. Yet. So it's still there, it's the smell of the gas. It's as if everybody's forgotten about it, it's gone away and forgotten about it, but it hasn't. It's, it's there and it, it's, we've got to live with it. At points, this tip has reached double the legal limit in height. It's even sparked demonstrations. In a statement, the Environment Agency, which regulates landfill sites, said it is using its regulatory powers to bring the Gilberdike landfill site into a condition where it no longer causes pollution or affects its neighbours. We did ask City Plant Limited, which runs the site, for a comment, but they haven't got back to us. Kate Sweeting reporting more on that on Look North, and our reporter uh, Andy Masters is in Newport this morning. Morning to you, Carl and Lizzie. I'm in Newport this morning in East Yorkshire, near the Gilbertike tip, which we've been talking about and we just heard in Kate's report there. With me this morning is the chair of Newport Parish Council, Roy Hunt, and also Kevin Clifford, who is a resident and the most local person to the tip as well. Uh, morning to you both this morning. Uh, Mr Hunt, if we can start with you then. How, how does everybody feel in, in the local area? It's obviously been an ongoing thing for some time. Well, first of all, you have to understand that this is probably one of the worst sources of environmental pollution in the East Riding. As chair of the parish council, I want to see the, environments, the environmental systems that will bring a stop to the pollution installed as soon as possible. Residents have waited for over two years for this pollution to come to an end. And the work required to restore the site hasn't really started yet. Uh, City plants we have been in contact with, uh, as yet we have had no response from them. What would you say to them? They've obviously they've missed another deadline as far as you're concerned. That's right, they've missed the deadline of 23rd of May that the, um, that the East Riding set. They're going to miss the deadlines that the Environment Agency has set because there's just too much work to do. You know, if you do nothing, then you get to a point where you're just not going to be able to finish the work in time. So my question to, the, to them is... When are you going to start? Uh, and you're fairly close to the tip. Uh, the conditions this morning aren't right to probably smell it as bad as it should be. How bad is it? What kind of sense can we get from the, from the people who are listening at home? I live about a mile from the tip, and if the wind is blowing in my direction, you can't, get, you, you can't use the garden, you have to close all the windows of the house. And on a hot summer day, that's obviously not the most ideal situation. That's right, and I've got, down between me and the tip, there are rows and rows of houses, so it's, it's unacceptable. Uh, and Kevin, you you are one of the closest residents, well, the closest resident to the site. Is that a similar picture for you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I live right next door to the site and uh, it's been uh, years and years of torment for me and my family. As Roy's just said, um, you can't have your windows or doors open when the wind's blowing in your direction. The smell is absolutely horrendous. Um, really, it destroys uh, a lot of your recreation. My wife is uh, very stressed out about it. She's on the medication for it. Um, she goes out and she has to leave the house. At times, she just can't bear to be there. The Environment Agency said they are looking into it. What would you say to City Plants and the Environment Agency, if you could? Well, the Environment Agency's been looking into it for a long, long time now and uh, nothing really seems to have happened very much. We've had a, a number of different uh, officers uh, in charge of, uh, of the site and um, until we see some real action on the site in terms of money being spent on the infrastructure that's required to put the place in, in, uh, into proper order, then I'm afraid I, I, you know, I'm very sceptical that anything's going to be done. Kevin, Roy, thank you ever so much for, for joining us this morning. Fingers crossed we get some sort of development over the coming months. Carl Lizzie, as I mentioned, no real smell here this morning, but I remember do driving past every so often on the, the A63 and the M62, and you can smell it from there. Uh, so there is there is a problem here in, in Newport and Gilbertdyke. Thank you, and you. Thank you. That's Andy Masters uh, at uh, Gilbertdyke. You went past last night. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can't stand the smell. 
It just dreadful, hits here. You're right. It, it is like you're eating it. Yeah. It just hits here, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't advise going past having anything to eat. Well, David Davis MP has weighed in on this uh, Gilbert Act tip problem. You can hear what he's got to say, what he's uh, uh, planning and trying to do about it with Amanda in around about uh, 15 minutes. Amanda's here live on the programme today. And if you're in the area, you might want to share your story of living near this stench in Newport and Gilbert Dyke and other areas east of Gould. Um, do get in touch and tell us what could be done about it. Amanda's taking your calls today. Day on that and many other subjects. It's uh, coming up to quarter to nine. Nearby says it's causing him and his wife a lot of stress. The agency could have done a lot better. I think they've crossed the fingers at times and hoped that things would get better. They've listened to promises by the operator, uh, which have never materialised. And uh, I think um, we're well overdue for some much stiffer action. Also in this first hour of the programme, about the tip at Gilberdyke. Now, Gilberdyke... Um, the village just east of Ghoul has had this big tip and it's... Well, we've been covering the story on BBC Radio Homicide for some years now. I've been down several times. It was the tip that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger than it was meant to. And people living in Newport and Gilberdyke are calling now on the East Riding Council and the Environment Agency to take enforcement action against the owners of the landfill tip. They say City Plant was supposed to have landscaped the tip by last month. Uh, but they claim the company hasn't even started work. Um, let's have a listen to... We're talking to David Davis a little bit later on in the programme about this and also the Environment Agency. But uh, Kate Sweeting has uh, got this report just to just to get, remind you about the story. It's a problem that should have gone away. This former tip in Gilberdyke was meant to be grassed over by last month, but the owners have missed that deadline and the people living near it say it still stinks. Especially on a night, we can sit in our lounge some nights and you can smell it in the lounge. Yet. So it's still there, it's the smell of the gas. It's as if everybody's forgotten about it, it's gone away and forgotten about it, but it hasn't, it's, it's there and it, it's, we've got to live with it. At points, this tip has reached double the legal limit in height. It's even sparked demonstrations. In a statement, the Environment Agency, which regulates landfill sites, said it is using its regulatory powers to bring the Gilberdyke landfill site into a condition where it no longer causes pollution or affects its neighbours. Come on, man. But for Kevin Clifford, who lives in the shadow of the tip, it's too little too late. He claims the ongoing saga has caused his wife to suffer from severe stress. The agency could have done a lot better. I think they've crossed the fingers at times and hoped that things would get better. They've listened to promises by the operator, uh, which have never materialised, and uh, I think um, we're well overdue for some much stiffer action. We did ask City Plant Limited, which runs the site, for a comment, but they haven't got back to us. Here we are, Kate Sweeting, uh, reminding us about that story. Maybe you live near the tip at Gilberdite. Maybe you're in Newport. Maybe it affects your lives. Maybe you're one of the people who've had the lorries going past your home for the last umpteen years. Maybe you bought your house thinking, oh, yeah, that tip will operate for another couple of years. And then 20 years later, it's still operating and it's the size of a, yeah, the size of a, something you'd find in the Lake District. Do get in touch at Grimsby 34. But first, let's uh, let's turn our attention to the smelly mountains of Gilberdyke and whatever is to be done about them. You've been hearing this morning the landfill site there should have been capped off last month. That didn't happen, though. People living nearby say it's making their lives a misery. They want the Environment Agency to do more to punish the site's owners. Roy Hunt is uh, from the Newport Parish Council. First of all, you have to understand that this is probably one of the worst sources of environmental pollution in the East Riding. As chair of the parish council, I want to see the, environments, the environmental systems that will bring a stop to the pollution installed as soon as possible. Residents have waited for over two years for this pollution to come to an end. And the work required to restore the site hasn't really started yet. They've missed the deadline of 23rd of May that the, um, that the East Riding set. They're going to miss the deadlines that the Environment Agency has set because there's just too much work to do. You know, if you do nothing, then you get to a point where you're just not going to be able to finish the work in time. So my question to, that, to them is, when are you going to start? Well, it's a question we're going to put to the Environment Agency. Where are we when it comes to getting the Gilberdyke tips sorted? Richard Clark is the Environment Manager for the Environment Agency in the Humber area. Morning, Mr Clark. Good morning. This, I mean, this is, I've been up and down to that tip 
more times than most people have had hot dinners. What on earth is happening with the Gilbertite tip? The, the site um, stopped receiving waste uh, about 18 months ago. It was effectively full then. And we uh, expected the operators then move into the restoration stage to make it safe for the environment and for the local residents. And uh, t we were working with the operator to try and put that into effect. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've become increasingly frustrated, and I know the residents have become angry and frustrated about the slow pace of change on that side. And so as a consequence of that, we've issued uh, three or four months ago a series of legal notices that require specific actions to be undertaken by specific dates. And if the operator meets those dates and those timescales, then the site should be largely restored by the end of this year. Uh, if, of course, it doesn't meet those uh, dates and timescales uh, and actions, then, of course, we'll have to reconsider our position about what action we take next. Because it seems to me that the Environment Agency response to what's been going on this tip has been flaccid, to say the least, right from them bringing hundreds and hundreds of lorry loads, the site getting way higher than it was ever meant to be. I mean, the thing grew out of all proportion to what had been agreed with the Environment Agency. You did nothing about that. So can the locals really expect you to, to enforce this capping now? Well, just to be clear, the responsibility for the site, the ultimate responsibility for the site rests with the operator, city plant. But don't you have the responsibility to enforce the rules that they're meant to work within? Yes, of course we do. Uh, the, the, our way of working is, in the first instance, is to try and work with operators. And on hundreds of similar sites around the country, that's a very effective and non-bureaucratic way of, of working. In this case, it's not worked. You're right. City plant have failed on many occasions to meet their deadlines and commitments. And that's why we've escalated it up to the position we're in now. Haven't you failed to enforce those commitments and deadlines and promises and, and planning um, agreements, though? Well, the planning agreements are, are a matter for the planning authority. Uh, the, the conditions in the permits, quite rightly, are, are you're, you're right to say, are a, are a matter for us. And we have, uh, as I say, issued these notices now, which, if they're not complied with, will, I guess, most likely result in a prosecution, and then the city plan will have to answer for that in the court. Can't you just go in there and fix it and then sue the company for the cost? No, it's the company's responsibility to remediate the site. It's not our responsibility to do that. No, but isn't, don't you have any means to be able to do that, to put an end to the... I mean, these people have been... Surely they've had enough. Is not it? Is it not time now for the Environment Agency to, to wade in and, and fix it and then, and then do all the legal wrangling afterwards? We don't have the, the powers, I don't think, to do that. And in any case, the fastest way for the site to be put into a safe environmental condition is for the operator to do, to do that. They have the resources, mm -hmm. they have the expertise to do that, and they're the, they're the organisation that have made the money out of the site. It's their responsibility to make sure this is put into a safe condition. Do you have steam coming out of your ears about the situation as much as the residents of Gilberdyke? It has been incredibly frustrating at the slow pace of progress on the site, and... We've, uh, we've spent an awful lot of resource down there, as, as your neighbours will attest. Uh, a lot of time on the site, a lot of time talking to them, a lot of time talking to uh, all the interested parties and the operator, and we'd much rather have spent our resources elsewhere. But unfortunately, because of the, the operator has consistently failed to meet the obligations in the permit, we've had to spend those resources down there, and we will continue to do so until the site is in a safe condition. Now, the, the Holton Price and Howden MP, David Davis, is coming on this programme in 10 minutes. I'm sorry that we've spoken to you before we've spoken to Mr Davis because um, uh, he's, I'm led to believe he's going to be rather critical about the Environment Agency's handling of this um, situation. But uh, bearing in mind at the minute, is, is there anything that, that you need me to be asking Mr Davis? Should government be doing more to give you powers down at Gilberdyke? No, Mr Davis is obviously representing the, the uh, neighbours of the site that have had that put up with a very difficult situation, a very unpleasant situation. Uh, but the fire, I would suggest, ought to be directed at the company that operate the site, City Plant. We're there to try and hold them to the conditions of the permit, but it, it, the ultimate responsibility uh, rests with the company that have the permit that have made the money out of the site. Right. Well, good luck with <laughs> good luck Thank with you. your task ahead of you, Richard. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming on the program this morning. There we are, Richard Clark from the Environment Agency in the Humber area, trying to answer some of the 
questions that I know that, that the people down in Gilberdike in Newport have been tearing their hair out trying to get the answers to over more than a year or two. Um, a big story for our region. David Davis will be joining us on the programme later. If you've got if you're affected by the Gilberdike tip, if you're if you live in Newport, if you're one of those people who all last summer in that glorious sunshine had to batten down the hatches and stay indoors just because the smell outside was so stomach-churning. Do get in touch with the programme. 8133 is my text number. Start your message with the letters RH. You see Radio Humberside. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. Well, you'd struggle to get to the bottom of it, wouldn't you? Uh, This stinky mess in Gilberdike, the tip that's... um, (sighs) My goodness, if we haven't heard enough over the years about the problems that getting too big, too many lorries, exceeding planning agreements, now all the agreements to cap it, even having had the requirements modified slightly by the planners, the city plant has so far, the the, the owners of the Gilberdike tip, failed to finish capping this tip. Now, the Holton Price and Howden MP, David Davis, is uh, is wading into this one. Morning, Mr Davis. Um, nice to have you on the programme this morning. Now, you've been down there. You've, you've been meeting with, with local residents. Yeah, well, well, this has been going on, even from my point of view alone, for for two years. I mean, and much longer than that when you take into account what the local council has been trying to do. But, yes, I've been, I've been down to talk to them any number of times. But most importantly, I've also been trying to deal with the Environment Agency. I understand you've had Richard Clark on already this morning mm-hmm. uh, in, in terms of um, trying to get this resolved. And, well, in, back in 2012, we were made a whole series of promises by the agency, including Mr. Clark, um, you know, uh, about how there would only inert material be put on, i.e. not smelly material be put on, uh, that was broken, how checks would be done regularly to ensure that was done, that was bro- that promise was broken, uh, that there would be a commitment to work closely with the East Yorkshire Council, because there the, are the two responsibilities, one the problems here is a split responsibility, that was broken. Um, technical requirements were put in place to cap the site because one of the problems is you can't just stop because it'll be you'll have poisonous leachate you'll have smells you'll have escaping methane and so on uh, so technical requirements were put in place that that didn't happen uh, and so on and so on so you know you've you've you, you've probably got a bit of a picture of this from people you've interviewed already today and uh, city plant and the various providers of the waste that's gone on there have been less than forthright perhaps is the is the simplest phrase I, I can use on this um, uh, in terms of the way they've handled it. So it's been, frankly, an all-round disgrace. And what I am trying to do is to try and force an end to it. I'm speaking, as it turns out, by luck, really, more than anything else, to um, the head of the Environment Agency, uh, Lord Smith, this afternoon at 4 o'clock about this very issue. Uh, and we're going to try to see if we can precipitate an outcome. Now, the, uh, a conclusion. Uh, now, the problem is that there are, two, there are two real big problems. One is that the people who have to do it, uh, City Plant, have not proven very um, uh, compliant so far. Uh, yeah, and to be fair, just like, because to be fair, the Environment Agency it, it is probably, I mean, it, Richard Clark did say he's... He's got a steam coming out of his ears about it because it doesn't matter what they've said. They they feel that they, the measures haven't been met and he feels that all of the the anger shouldn't be directed at the Environment Agency or the East Riding Council but, in fact, at City Plant itself because it's them that's failed to meet all the requirements that they've, they've been asked to meet. I think uh, as a primary... Uh, uh, <laughs> thinking about who should get blamed, yeah, as a primary blame, yes, he's quite right. I mean, these are the people who, after all, created... Uh, what with the, the situation we have now, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the environment agency has been less than rigorous in, in imposing its powers, if you like, on this. Um, and one of the problems here is whether there are enough resources in the company. I mean, the trouble with these companies is they set themselves up as shell companies, the wrong word, but it, it, you'll get my idea if I say that the, the companies don't have enough resources necessarily, so that if you actually leaned on them very hard, they just go bankrupt, and that's it, you're left with a liability, you're left with a big, stinky site with no one to look after it. Um, Now, in these deals, there is 
uh, a guarantee, a sort of bond, if you like, uh, and that bond is uh, is supposed to pay for anything that's done if the company goes under. Um, now, I suspect, I don't know because it's, uh, it's commercially confidential, but I suspect that the bond that the Environment Agency has on this site is not big enough. Uh, and that's why they're not pressing hard enough. But I think you know, this has gone on in, you know, in, even under my um, uh, purview uh, for nearly two years of uh, promise, broken promise, new promise, broken promise, new promise, broken promise. And I think there has to come a time at which you draw a line. And one of the things I'm going to be asking Chris Smith about today is in the event that uh, City Plant don't deliver on this, uh, will the Environment Agency have the powers and resources to do it themselves? Because that's the other problem. I mean, one of the things that's happened... The thing, I, I did ask that question, Mr yeah. Clark. He said they, they don't have the power. I said, can't you just wade in and fix it and then deal with all these legal notices afterwards? And he said that they don't actually have the powers to be able to go on and, and do that. Well, I'm not sure that's quite legally correct. Um, what, what, there, 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 are three, there are three issues. One is do they have the legal power? And I think they do in, in extremists. That's why the bond exists. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the bond. Uh, secondly, do they have the technical capability? That, that's, uh, um, that's, that is a, 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 a real problem. And thirdly, do they have the resources? Do they have the money, basically? And uh, under current circumstances, obviously, all government departments are short of money. And um, those are questions I'm going to put to, to Chris Smith today. Um, he may not have the answers answered, but we're uh, at the end of it either. But we're, we're going to get to the bottom of that, frankly. Um, but at the end of the day, somehow or other, the pressure must be brought to bear, and it may even be, you know, final financial pressure, or it may be fines, there's all sorts of possibilities, there's lots of environmental law around there, um, to make this happen, because, you know, we have... We have <laughs> We have been gentlemanly, I suppose is the right word. We have accepted people's promises. We expect accepted people's undertakings time and again. And that's true pr principally with the, with the commercial operators, but also, frankly, with the agencies involved. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think it's not unreasonable that uh, uh, local people are getting pretty exasperated with mm. it. Because you've other, come other, into this before, quite... Before, before we come back, one other thing I'm, uh, in, in terms of this week, we're also having a meeting with the Environment Agency locally on, in York on Friday. Now, what that is to hear is a report back, because we got, we got exasperated quite a long time ago. Not all of this happens in, in public. And, uh, and, we, and another, another part of the agency has been looking at what the, 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 the local region has been doing. So we're going to get that report back on Friday as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll also find out from that, I suspect. Isn't your government going to do something about the fact that all these waste disposal companies, it's very lucrative, isn't it, if you can just yeah, take, the money, no, no, take, take the money and dump all the stuff and then just walk away? Look, I agree with you. The, 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 sim the simple truth on, uh, on this is that a lot of well-intentioned but very badly thought through environmental proposals have been put through in the last decade or two. And uh, I mean, large under the last government, but both governments have, have some blame for it. And it's been all you know, the ideas, sort of nice green ideas, and it ranges from this sort of thing, blighting people's lives with this sort of thing, through to people spreading this sort of compost, uh, unpleasant compost on fields and ruining people's lives through the smell that comes from that, through to destroying their lives with wind farms. I mean, you know, the, these environmental drives have been thoughtless about the impact on ordinary people's lives. Okay, so what are you doing? So I, I, so I have, well, what am I doing? What have I been doing? I've been complaining about this non-stop for, for some time. Whether I'll ever, ever have enough leverage to make this change, I don't know. But this is much more about operational failure. Mm. It's not so, this one's much more about operational failure. The other areas which are about policy failure, this is about operational All right, well, flex your muscles where you can, David. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, before you go, I was told I was only allowed to talk to you about this. What don't you want to talk about? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we always call in and say, all right, what do you want to talk about today? And the answer Are you is sure? Me. We can't draw you in on any handbag swinging within your party, no? Uh, what are you thinking of? Well, I don't know. I just want to issue we, money on Miss Piggy we've, or we've, Kermit. We've, we've actually had quite a successful <laughs> week this week. I think rather, uh, rather a good Queen speech and rather a good outcome in the New York by-election. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling rather, I'm feeling unusually benign today. Uh, well, there we are. Do you know me? I'll always, I'll always poke the bear. Uh, uh, David, nice to, nice to talk to you. Bye-bye. There we are, David Davis, one of our few local 
MPs that once had pants made with his face on uh, in the run-up to an election. Talking about the Gilberdyke tip, what do you make of that one this morning? Are you affected by the Gilberdyke tip? Is it all very well David Davis coming on and saying, well, something more should be done? Is he doing enough? Is the Environment Agency doing enough? What's going to happen with the people operating the tip at Gilberdyke that have failed once again to meet one of the requirements that they were meant to meet in terms of operating the site at Gilberdyke? Very keen to hear from you. Also talking to you this morning about your greatest theme about another subject we've been talking about this morning, about the Gilberdyke um, tip. Graeme, you've been driving the diggers at Gilberdyke tip. Hello. Hello. I'm on the main digger, yes. So what, what's going on up there? Are you getting it covered up? We are, but at a very slow pace. We've um, People don't know the full extent of what's been going on up here. Um, we actually didn't start, haven't started the job immediately, just in the recent uh, time span. We actually started this job last December. And we did about a fortnight, and then after a fortnight, um, we got stopped. Uh, because certain things needed looking into. Um, then we got started again, and this is after meetings with the Environment Agency and uh, East Riding of Yorkshire Council. So work's but, uh, been stopped because the Council and the Environment Agency have had concerns. Is that what you're saying? Well, we have certain criteria to meet. Mm. Uh, to, to, it's not just as simple as put pouring topsoil and, and uh, compost mix on, on the uh, site. It has to be placed in certain areas. It has to be stored. We have to put it in 16-metre rows and uh, things like that in order to, with certain conditions, to abide by. And in the process of this, last December when we started tipping the compost, within one day, uh, it was agreed between ourselves and the EA that to keep the smell down on the odour factor, we would place topsoil on top of the heaps with this machine to uh, mask the odour. And we've been doing that ever since, and so that's helped part of the issue. But um, there's a lot of things going on up here. That, I mean, we get lot, we get complaints about order. It's not necessarily the tip. We have had an instance, we had one only last week, whereas pig slurry was being spread on the southeast corner of the tip, and naturally with the prevailing winds, it blows it to the northwest corner. Oh, so people smell a smell, and they associate it with the tip, and that is not the case. It is a different smell. And we have to write this in our reports, which we... Hey, if, oh, excuse me. That's all right. Don't worry, you're busy. Go, carry on. The radio. Um, it's submitted. Uh, you know, we have to put these in reports that we have to keep for the Environment Agency and various bodies. Um, the, the big thing about this is the cost involved. The firm I work for has lost probably, eight, probably something like £68,000 in machinery costs stood in the last few months. Just machines that's hired in to do the job mm. and are just stood packed up because we're waiting of soil samples being analysed and such as this. And all this work has to be done. And people say, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. It is happening. It's just at a very slow pace. And all the time, the time scale, which I think was mentioned in various interviews, yeah. is ticking away. Well, it should have been covered over by, by last month, shouldn't it? It should. Well, from what I understand, yeah, yes, well, that's one thing, but we have another date as well. But even mm. then, it, oh, I don't the think it's anywhere got? near. Pardon? What's the other date you've got? I don't know. I've, I've had various things banded around. I'm only a digger driver, but I've had various things banded around. I've had one of October, I've had one of, uh, of August, you know, and, and uh, I don't need know what exactly um, is, is in place, but no, there will be a date in place. Mm but it's nowhere near the time scale that we need to do the job. This site's been going on for 40 years, and the local residents want it finished. We've got, if we was le left to get on with the job, we could do it in half the time that, w that it is taking us to do. Uh, the problem is we have to meet these certain criteria by the EA, by your East Riding of Yorkshire Council, and all the time, um, we've got this situation. I personally must have lost £10,000 in being sat at home and wages lost. Um, we've, we used to have something like 78 people on the recycling side of this reinstatement job. Mm. We're down to 50-some now. And when you see lads come in on the morning and, and they're like, are we going to get a full day in today? You know, it, it's demoralising. It is severely demoralising. They're wondering about their jobs all the time. And it's a question of, we've got a job here. 
We want to get it capped off. We want to get it done for local residents. But you can't just plough ahead. I mean, another issue we've got is, I think, that was mentioned is leak gate. We can only cover certain areas marked out by the EA and ourselves. Uh, their officials come down and negotiate with our officials and they go around and say, right, we can cover that area. We can't cover this area. And the reason being is because certain areas have to be capped with clay, which is going to be let in, and other areas can be, have the uh, recycling mix put on top ready to promote grass growth. Right. These, all this takes time. And it, how it, and long, how time, long, Graham? In, in your opinion, as, the, as one of the, the people... Um, Covering up this site, mm-hmm. in your opinion, how long is it going to? How much work have you got left to do? How long, in your opinion, do you think it's going to take? We've well, in, in one sense, we've only just nicely started. If we'd have been left to get on with the job, we'd have probably been halfway through by now. Right, and but, how long is it going to take you? I wouldn't like to say because of the. I don't know the exact tonnage figures. That's well, I, roughly, it, is it, it going to take you six months a year? It's it same as on the side batters. People say to us, uh, the flanks, as the EA call them, we have a set figure as to what we can put on there. It's not done in tonnage, it's done in meterage. OK, so, Graham, oh, it, 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 will, is it going to take you less than a year or more than a year, do you think? If, if tonnage figures are what I, I've had mentioned, it could take us just a, slightly more than a year. Right. But... Um, that's employment for a lot of people, and in the grand process of things, this site being a, a, allowed to be open 40 years, let's get it done, let's get it done right. There's trees to be planted, you know, th- there's a lot to be done, uh, and uh, people don't realise what is involved with the uh, paperwork, the rules, the regulations, and the actual putting materials into place to get this job done. Graham, I can't thank you enough for calling in, and you're no right. Problem. It's that you know it's no important, problem. and I'm I'm sorry that the toing and froing has cost you money and cost mm. your colleagues money. I'm guessing that a lot of the people living up the road in uh, in Newport won't be ever so upset that the company running it might have lost a bit of money in the last few months. I think they'll almost be cheering at that because it's been very frustrating for them, hasn't it? It's felt like it, you know it's grown out of all proportion to what it should have been, hasn't it? It has been very frustrating. I mean, my stepdaughter lives in New. Part one of the adjoining, the, the, probably the most adjoining village, probably more so than Gilbertite. Mm. And I've said to her, Do you smell any smell from the tip? On a regular basis, I scare and I have to chap at the fish shop and other places. And no, not really. You know, nothing. No. Great. Uh, it, it, it is a, it, we understand it's a problem. We understand, but there's a lot more involved. To, you can't just pour a load of topsoil on and say, That's it, it's finished. It doesn't work like that. It's got to be laid down in a certain manner. We've got to, you know, you've got to look at certain aspects of what's involved re- re- regarding leachate, stuff like that. The drawing off of this leachate, that the, it runs into certain ponds that we have around the site, and we've got to monitor all that and everything. We've got to monitor the leachate levels. All this takes time, and if, if at some point during this process, one body says, I'm sorry, we need samples of that before we go any further, the job stops. Graham, thanks for calling. I've got to let you go because we're late for the, the travel and everything. No but that, massive thanks for giving us a call. There we are, Graham. Oh, isn't it nice hearing hearing another side of a story sometimes?